topic here guys once again is surface geometry and uh, specifically roof geometry and what we're going to go over today in this uh, video is just some basic constructions in relation to roof geometry okay uh, so just reading the question here it says the plan of a solid is given the surfaces a and b have an inclination of 35 degrees to the horizontal plane now this question has previously complete, been completed however we're just going to talk through it uh, just to get a better understanding of the topic okay so it says the surfaces a and b have an inclination of 35 degrees to the horizontal plane so previously we were just given the plan view down here and the surfaces a and b and what we were told was that the pitch of the roof or those surfaces as we can see in the pictorial view up here have an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal plane so if you just put in 35 there and out here is obviously 35 as well now what that essentially means is that uh, when sitting on the ground flat that the pitch going up in this direction is at 35 degrees very simple okay so one way you could have done this question was you could have projected an auxiliary view and from uh, projecting up you obviously have the length of the overall structure here and coming down to 45 degrees project up our widths and at this point here we were able to go uh, using our protractor we were able to create an angle of 35 degrees and um, and the exact same here at B and what we were able to do was where they crossed obviously gave us the pitch of the roof at the very very top also you only had to do it at one side by going up 35 degrees here on surface A uh, projecting over the middle of the roof and bringing it up it would also show us as well and what we were able to determine from that was the height which was from here down to here and by projecting that across then we were able to complete the elevation view therefore uh, completing the question the alternative method we could have done there was by looking in in this direction perpendicular to this face here okay by looking in straight at that we were able to see the true shape of it over here once again and the exact same thing uh, at each corner we were able to use our protractor and project uh, up at 35 degrees either way and it would give us the exact same result okay so both methods are uh, very useful and it could be done either way it's just uh, working out which one you works for you best in your question okay so uh, just going to move on to another explanation on another question that has just a slight bit more difficulty in us and uh, we'll explain that as well okay so on uh, this question we can see that we were given uh, we were actually just given at the very very start uh, a box down here showing us the positioning of the surfaces there was actually no lines in here okay it was just telling us the position of the surface a uh, the position of b c and d and what we had to do was we had to complete the elevation and end elevation and uh, auxiliary depending on how we wanted to attempt the question but starting off as i said just given the plan view and what it said was the pictorial shows a tent like structure the surfaces a and b have an inclination of 45 degrees and 30 degrees respectively so a would have 45 degrees and b would be at 30 degrees to the horizontal plane so we could see a and b here so one way we could work this question out to work out the height of it because we can see obviously the ridge of the roof was going to be in here uh, was projecting an end elevation over here and if we followed the edge with a came to here up and it said a was at 45 degrees so what we did at this point here was we went up at an angle of 45 degrees and b it said uh, when we projected it up it went up at 30 degrees to the horizontal plane so where those 45 degrees and 30 degrees lines met uh, what that gave us the actual height of the overall structure so projected the height over here now it also tells us that uh, c and d are inclined at 50 degrees to the horizontal plane so what we did was when we projected up c up here uh, we went at 50 degrees at an angle like that and the exact same with on the surface d over here so i'll just write them in as well so we had c as this surface and uh, which we see as an edge view in this view and d was on this surface okay both 50 degrees and what that did was it gave us the actual cross points here where the surface c intersected the surface b and a and d intersected d uh, a and b as well okay and once we found those we located them down here in our plan view and we were able to complete the plan now uh, another way we could have determined the height from it this height here is the same as this height here was to project an auxiliary view perpendicular uh, to the edge here 
Okay, so when we projected that perpendicular, what we did was we got the true shape, or well, we didn't actually get the true shape, but we got the true inclination of the surface B and the surface A, because once again, A was at 45 degrees of horizontal plane and B was as well. Uh, whereas this picture at here, it's not a true shape essentially, but it is the surface C. Okay, and if you can imagine it was C, but it was just slightly tilted backwards, obviously, at a certain angle. And we knew that angle then, obviously, when we looked at our elevation up here to be 50 degrees. But that was another way of getting the height of it. So it might have been easier just to do the auxiliary up here, uh, but we did an, or sorry, not an auxiliary, an end elevation up here, but another way was doing the auxiliary elevation over here as well. Okay, so. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to project to another question and we will be completing that question. Okay. All right, folks, uh, on the next question on this page, uh, we have been given a fully completed elevation and a partially completed plan, uh, plan view of this structure here. Now, what it says is uh, the structure shown in the pictorial contains intersecting surfaces A and B, and we can see where A and B are going to intersect each other. It says the elevation and partial plan of the structure are given, as I explained previously. Complete the plan given that the surface A makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal plane. So that's our clue there to complete this question. What that means is that the uh, surface A here, which we can see has an angle, it says that that angle is 60 degrees to the horizontal plane. So we can see that the angle, excuse me, inside here is 60 degrees to the horizontal plane. What we have to do is we have to use that information to basically complete the plan view down here. Now, we can use that two ways. We could do um, an auxiliary view, uh, projecting out if we were looking in this direction. Uh, we can project out and obviously take the take A and then at 60 degrees we'd be able to work out our width down here. Or you could do an end elevation over here. So I'm going to stick with the simple end elevation. So putting in my uh, 45 degree line so that I'll be able to transfer my widths. And we know A starts here. So if I transfer that across and project that up. And then I will be able to transfer across my height. Now, at this point, uh, essentially all we're trying to work out is the width of A here. We're trying to get basically this distance here. So we are, okay? And to be able to get that distance, uh, what I'd actually try and do, if we imagined this traveling across here, forget about the surface B for a second, and this continued across, and then at this corner, if we just took it as it was that one structure there, Forget about surface B at the moment, but we just imagined that B was gone and it was just this A structure here with a 60 degrees inclination. Now, if I was to look at that, and I'll try and drag it down so we can kind of make kind of a, a line diagram out of it. That's kind of what we'd have there. And inside and there, it would be 60 degrees. Okay? Once again, the exact same as the angle in here. Now, if I was to look in this direction at it, okay, what it would be would be the end elevation and project it onto the left-hand side. So looking at it from this direction, which is the same as looking at it from here, it's just obviously this is on the 2D surface, and what we're going to do is we want to create that 60-degree inclination. So very simple, we have the height of it, we have where it is on the ground, so at that, higher, that height there, very simple, 60-degree angle. And what that should determine for us is the width of uh, the surface A. Okay, so very simple. That angle inside and there, once again, is 60 degrees. Okay, we have now found our width. And at that point, I can transfer it down. And at this point here, that is how wide the surface A is. Okay, and very simple here. At this point then, I can now complete the rest of the structure and just heavy it in. That is where A and B are intersecting. Put in the B. And obviously then, I have the line connecting the two of them up here, up to this point here. Uh, very, very simple. Just uh, using simple understanding of uh, the roof structures there and the simple uh, end elevation will complete the problem there for us. Okay, so now at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to another basic construction on roof geometry. 
Right, folks, uh, so the last uh, basic construction on roof geometry, uh, we can see here we are given a completed plan and structure here of the pictorial view here, and obviously what they're going to ask us to do is complete the elevation up here. Now, to be able to do that, just going to read the question, it says, the plan of the solid is given, the surface B has an inclination of 35 degrees to the horizontal plane. So, what? Uh, looking at that there, that means the surface B, which is this surface, has an angle of 35 degrees, it's pitched up at an angle uh, off the ground. And we can see, basically, if we come over here to our pictorial view, that angle inside in here is 35 degrees. Okay, that is the information we're given, basically, to complete this problem. And what we're actually going to be able to tell from that is, and if we look at the straight here, A and B obviously have the same height, so we're going to use that information uh, to determine the height of the object up here. Okay, so one thing I can do straight away, always when I have a, a completed plan, is I can project up my various points. Now, I know some points are on the ground here, so I project that up, and that's only going up as far as the XY line. Another point that's on the ground is this one, and another point that's on the ground is this one. And then the other various points all have a height to them. This one has a height, this one here, which is at the back, has a height, and this one. Okay, now, somewhere up there is going to be our structure, okay? But what we have to do is we have to complete, uh, we have to work out the inclination to determine the height. And one way we could do that is we could take an auxiliary view, okay, along uh, the surface B. So what we want to do is we want to see this line here is a point view, okay? Because that point view then I will be able to project up an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal plane. But essentially what I want to do is I want to actually see the true shape of that face there. So I can see this line is a point view and this is a true shape by looking perpendicular to the face or looking along the line. I can either look along the line but we can see the line is actually perpendicular to the face. Same thing. Okay, so to look perpendicular to the face, I'm going to project an auxiliary view. So a little bit of sliding set squares here. So uh, I'm going to set up my 45 on it. Other sets go underneath and literally just project down. And that there is my X1. Project down here a little bit further. Y1. And if I rotate it, I can now bring out the points, just to keep it neat and tidy. I could have done it straight off it. So that's on the ground, and this is going to have a certain height. We don't know exactly what height it is yet. But what I do have to do now is literally just use 35 degrees on my protractor. I will extend out this line just so I have a nice little guide to work off of. So, 35 degrees on my protractor. Okay, so 10, 20, 30, 35 is over here. And there we go. That is my auxiliary view, showing the true shape of the surface here on this side. But the angle inside in here, which is what was all important, that was 35 degrees, but most importantly then, what it did was it determines the height for us, which is from here to here. So I'll take that on my compass, that height there, and I'm going to step it up. And once again, I don't have to mark them in all of them. Uh, the last thing I will do, sorry, I'm just going to, just to signify the height. That height there, same as this height here. Okay, that is very, very important. Just using a simple auxiliary to be able to determine our height. Now I'm going to transfer that across, and as I said previously, uh, it's going to go over as far as this one. So at that point there, that is the height of the overall structure. And now it's just about connecting up the right mark, right points. So this edge here, which is here. Okay. And then we have this point connects up to this point. 
and then we have this point down here connects up to this guy and almost done then just heavy in this line here and that face that I have here as we can see it there that is where we have the 35 degrees and that is the true shape of it down here okay I uh, hope you found that useful. Some very basic uh, roof uh, geometry constructions there, but all of this uh, very important. And uh, just usually, usually using simple um, end elevations or uh, auxiliary views, we can usually determine the heights and the various points that we're going to need. Okay.